What's happening, Blades? We're back in usual settings with usual camera, recording on my phone. No issues, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I don't know how many years stuck around to the end of my previous video, but I kind of added a little bit onto the end after the like outro, if you like. Just saying I weren't keen. I weren't keen. I'd had a look back at how it all set up. I don't know how it were so bad, but anyway, I will keep trying to make improvements, but I think it's back to the drawing board, to be honest. And thank you for everybody's feedback. Somebody said I look like David Dickinson, which made me laugh. You must be blinking joking. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep trying, but again, any, any tips from any experienced videographers or anything like that? Because if you can't tell already, I'm absolutely winging this. <laughs> no, no claims to be a professional around here. So as I record, the Wendy's have just beaten Barnsley in the uh, League One playoff final. Pfft, they didn't deserve it. Um, we, we were on our way back from Caravan, made a tactical stop at a pub for Sunday lunch with a big screen TV so I could watch it. And Barnsley were all over them with 10 men. Those two key decisions went against Barnsley, as we'll all be aware of. Um, there should have been a penalty and then they've had a man sent off, which we're never sending off. I'm not going to focus too much on on them because, you know, we're still a league in front of them, aren't we? You know, but um, I heard Windass afterwards, which made me laugh, saying it were an absolutely shocking performance from both teams. I think if anybody sniffs around him in championship, he'll be off, hopefully anyway, because, you know, more of their better players that leave, the better. The only silver lining for me is Darren Moore, uh, getting what he deserves. I, I really like Darren. I don't know him personally. My dad does. My dad knows Darren more, but one of, and he's one of the most genuine guys you can ever meet. Really nice fella. Shame he's managing them because it just tarnishes what you think of him, doesn't it? But the way they've treated him is absolutely shambolic. And the club and the fans, they should all be a shit. Listen, I know Eki's a nice enough guy and... We all have our opinions on whether he should be manager or shouldn't be. He certainly didn't in the early days anyway. I didn't see anybody with such derogatory, horrible language towards him. I just, I just think you can't buy class, can you, Wednesday? Unbelievable. Well done to Darren Moore, and I hope they get relegated next season. And to be honest, I mean, I may eat my words here, and we're, we're going into the toughest league in the world, but that championship does not look easy next year. Obviously, the Borough didn't make it up. West Brom will come back better. You've got to think Norwich and Watford will get their act together. They've still got parachute payments. Then you've got Southampton, Leicester and... Oh, what other one? Who else? Went? Oh, Leeds. Leeds went down because they're falling apart again. Leeds! Leeds are falling apart! Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, you know, could have been a perfect weekend if Barnsley had done it. My off-the-wall prediction is that Michael Duff probably ends up at Wednesday. <laughs> That's a really out-there call, but I think their loyalty is in the bin, and if Darren Moore don't get off to a good start, they'll let him go. And I think Michael Duff will see it as a, an upgrade to go to Wednesday in Championship rather than stay at Barnsley. I hope that doesn't happen because I think he's a good manager, but I, that's my off-the-wall prediction for you. So, enough about them. Let's talk about the Sheffield team that matters couple of stories to talk about today. Um, thank you to Nath Emmingham again, which is where I've got my information from his Yorkshire Live articles, uh, a bit from James Shield as well in Star. So um, thanks to those lads for giving the info. The first bit of news is the 777 Group, um, the American investment group that have been loosely linked to United, said to have an interest in West Ham also. Um, failed with a bid for Everton because somebody else has just entered exclusivity with them, but were willing to pay up to 600 million to acquire Everton. So they've got a bit of cash. Uh, and what do we know about them? So they were founded in 2015 by uh, a couple of American lads. Josh Wander, who's got 15 years experience of investing. And Stephen Pascoe, who's got 30 years investment experience in the US financial markets. Um, no idea what that means. It could have been anything, couldn't it, really? But um, the Liverpool Echo is quoting. They've been operating, what, eight years? And the Liverpool Echo is now um, surmising that they've got $6 billion worth 
of assets in their portfolio and it ranges from sports to entertainment to all sorts of different things but in terms of the sports side of things they own several football or soccer clubs already but I, i'm there for the panther so yes we'd potentially be joining another it's not a united world is it let's hope it's more of a city group kind of thing because once you hear some of these names you'll realize that they're proper clubs and some of them have fallen on hard times and some of them are sort of rebuilding but there's genoa in um italian league serie b just one serie b i think they certainly got promoted vasco da gama in brazil i've heard of them i don't know if they're any good standard liege in belgium finished six in their league which is underachieving for them but big club red star in france not heard of them i'll be honest melbourne victory in oz and the most recent uh, acquired club is Hertha Berlin in Germany who've just finished rock bottom at Bundesliga so an eclectic mix in terms of size of club which is obviously a big step up from what we're used to in United World the only concern I'd have would be we're clearly not um, the biggest club in that mix but we're in the best league by a mile let's be right um, so would we become the primary focus of that group You've got to hope so, because I've always thought, same about United Group, how do beer shop fans feel that they're now a feeder club for Sheffield United, who at the time were in the Championship? Uh, you know, how do Chateau feel that we're going to pilfer their academy of any, any style that's, you know, in 10 years' time? So I don't know how I'd feel not being number one in the pyramid. They've also got a minority stake in Sevilla, um, in Spain, obviously another really well-established club, much bigger than us. Um, so it's a really interesting thing. As I say, I won't want to be anything but number one in a in a group of teams. So there's pros and cons to that, isn't there? Um, there's certainly a lot of finance there and there's good connections there in terms of a shared scouting network. That would be unbelievable. But if they're thinking, oh, well, we can now move Illumin and Die to Sevilla. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's one of them. What I would say is they are said to be a really uh, an ideal backer for us somebody who comes in and wants to take a majority share all they want full control of the club they'd obviously have the finances to push us onto the next level which is what we want but it's not been confirmed that they're interested i think this link has come as a tenuous link because they want to buy a premier league club no at no point has anybody said they're going to be buying Sheffield United. I think it's been a link that's been made because they haven't purchased Everton and they're now linked potentially with Sheffield United and West Ham, who are also touting for investment. So of the two clubs, obviously West Ham's bigger currently. Um, and if they were talking about potential stability within the Premier League and if they could take full control of West Ham. I don't know the situation over there. I'm not I'm not that interested, to be honest. I'm, I only care about Blades. But there's there's been no bid. And Darren's confirmed as well that they've not been in contact with us. They may be doing a bit of due diligence, but they've certainly not stepped forward and, and made anything formal at this stage. So one to be a little aware of, obviously. And it's good to have the information about who they are if they do turn it into a concrete bid. But at the moment... It all appears to be a bit of paper talk, to be honest. The second article um, that Nath's produced in the Yorkshire Live is one that's focusing on Hecky and how difficult it's going to be to get deals over the line. Um, I can see this. You'd think we get promoted to Prem. Yes, we've got a restricted budget, but overall we're going to clear the decks financially and we should be able to utilise that brass to, to then cherry pick and certainly be much stronger this time next season no matter what division we're going to be in. Well, it's not quite as easy as that. One thing that they talk about in the article is uh, Premier League tax. And I talked about championship tax when we're on about buying players from, it's an English tax, isn't it? Let's be right. But I talked about championship tax when we look at players like Victor Jokeres and things like that, where it would be 20, 25 million, whereas you could go abroad and get him for half of that money. Well, in the Premier League, when you're buying from abroad, what Ek is saying is, they'll recognise you're a Premier League club, know that that comes with money traditionally, not for our club, unfortunately, but then double the price. So there's no more Anel deals or they, they become much harder to find because the quality's got to be there. You've got to get the quality of an Anel and you're not going to get him for four million. 
he'd be going for eight or ten million, and that's half of his budget this year, <laughs> allegedly, which is crazy. They also touched on, you know, the fact that it's becoming less and less likely that we get Tommy Doyle because certainly not on a permanent. Because he, he might have a punt if he's going for eight to ten million, but again, that's half the budget. And it's also said that he'd have to take a huge pay cut to join United in the first place. And then along with any other permanent signings, Tommy would have to take a relegation wage cut. And let's be right, it's probably 50-50, if not weighted the other way, that we might well go down next season. So any permanent signings will have to sign a relegation wage cut clause in a club that's going to be one of the favourites to go down. So permanent signings become more and more difficult to obtain. That's why players like your Ryan Mannings who would make the championship team of the season in, in a blade shirt, I've no doubt about it. He's made the, his own club's player of the season. He's going on a free in a position, left wing back, that we are desperate to strengthen. Stuff like that is a no-brainer for me. Get him in, it's a cheap deal. Mike Cooper at Plymouth, a League One goalkeeper at the time, now going into championship, but not proven at that level. Young, player at season for the last two years, named in league team at season, despite being injured since February. Get him in. Two million quid or something for a, a young goalkeeper. We've got to future-proof ourselves as a club. I've talked about this a lot. Apparently, there's been um, signings come to Shirecliff. Well, a, a prospective signings been shown around Shirecliff, so things are moving. But it also says in the article that Blades fans are going to have to be patient this summer as the squad starts to take shape. So we'll be testing our patience, I think, at some stage. I'm going to finish today on some more Ramble Rumours. <music> Louis O'Brien has been linked again with the club. Big fan of this. Um, I know we've talked about a few players that we're not, so hot on and things like that. I'm, I'm a winning and in about him. Lewis O'Brien's not one of them. He is, he fits my profile of what I want in terms of a top, top championship player. His wages will not be astronomical. He'll be sustainable or retainable, however you want to put it, in terms of he would stay with the club. We could sign him on a four or five year deal and he'd accept a wage reduction, I'm sure, because he's got to be realistic about where he's going to end up. And if, if we do get relegated, he's a, a huge asset to us in that league. So I, I think he's a no-brainer if he's available, but it's got to be at a cut price. I think deals like this and deals like Tommy Doyle particularly, it's got to be a loan for Tommy and then on survival, potentially make it permanent with, or an option or something of that nature because we haven't got the money at the minute and it's, it's unfortunate, but that's where we are. But we've got to strike that balance between not overspending and getting in the quality that we need. Can you imagine that? A midfield three of Sander, Doyle and O'Brien. That, that's what we want. That is what we want. He's been playing at DC United under Wayne Rooney. Played in the last 13 games, it says, and um, scored a goal, got an, got an assist. But he's more of a box-to-box -box sort of good engine sort of player. Playing really well from reports. But it's a poor league. You can't really test that against anything. But it just shows, doesn't it? They had to send him to America because they couldn't fit him in 25-man squad, couldn't Forrest. Absolute shambles of a, a buy, that was. Um, how, what Huddersfield would have done to have him in their side this season rather than have pocketed the money. But, you know, these are the way things work. But if Lewis O'Brien becomes available, I want us in that queue. And I've saved the best one to last. It's been talked about previously. We mentioned it as part of the squad rebuild. I still think it's a high-end one that I'm surprised we've been so seriously linked because it's reported in loads of different outlets. This little snippet I've taken from the mail, but Connor Cody has been linked with a return to United because he's on loan at Everton, as we know, from Wolves. They have a four and a half million pound agreement, but it's an option for Everton and he's not been getting in until that last game where I thought he played really well. I don't get it because He's, well, he's a Premier League player all day long. Good enough for Everton. Good enough for Wolves. I was surprised he left them. If he becomes available, we get him. We get him and we put him in our back three. I know it's not a neat fit. And four and a half million is nearly a quarter of our budget and he's going to be the top earner 
he's going to be well up there in terms of his wages. But I think he's worth it. I think he's worth it. He sort of brings us up a level. So whether you put Anel on the left and uh, Cody on the right, Egan in the middle. I know some of you will be saying drop Egan. I'm not dropping Egan from my team, but it's all about opinions. I just think Cody is too good a deal to miss if we can get him for as low as four and a half million because he's you're getting a proven Premier League player at a cut price, let's be right. I don't know why he's so low. I don't know why he's not wanted by these clubs. You hear nothing about him being a bad character. He's nothing, been nothing but praised being a quality leader in the dressing rooms and things like that. He, he were captain of Wolves for years and then obviously fell out of favour with previous manager. Get him in. Get him into to United. He levels us up, doesn't he? So I don't know if you agree with that because... Right centre back is not a position. I think that, that I would say that's his most natural position, or even middle at three. That's certainly not a position we should be pouring a lot of money into. But it weren't last season when we had a limited budget and we opted for an L. And because uh, nobody had wanted to replace Bash at the start of last season, but it were a huge upgrade. And look what's happened because of it. I think we need to look at continually upgrading. He's an England international, no doubt. Half a season we. Un unbelievable performances and let's be right defence are going to see a lot of the ball aren't they in a United shirt he'll be back in that England squad I've no doubt about it and that levels us up that sort of brings us up as you know Sheffield United have got a fully fledged England international in the squad again so let me know what you think would you want Connor Cody what do you think to the 777 group do you want him to come in now or do you still want Dozy in do you not want Dozy in is Dozy even in the conversation anymore I don't know Stop asking me. Thank you to everybody that took part on our little shorts experiment. So over on our shorts channel, Blaze Ramble Shorts, there's now, we did a bit of a, a Q and A. So that those are all up now, or they should be, um, in terms of just a couple of people firing some questions to me. So thank you for everybody that contributed to that. Um, we're just trying to get numbers up over there, but this is our main focus, the main channel. If you can like, comment and subscribe, we're so close to 1500 subscribers now. Subscribe to my good friend Jim Smith's podcast, The Blades Ramble, right now. Thank you, Cammy. Much appreciated. I'll keep using it, of course I will. And I didn't pay for it. Somebody, I posted it over on Facebook, and I don't use Facebook. To be honest, I need to up my game with other platforms. But somebody commented on Facebook, looks like he's paid for it to me. <laughs> you clearly don't know me, do you? <laughs> so please subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. We... Well on the way. I've got my target at 2,000, as you know. So keep telling your friends. We had a bump last time you were doing that. Much appreciated. Spread the word as best you can. And we are growing. We, we might not always get it right with new formats and stuff, but we'll get there. Thanks also to our ramblers who are the backbone of this channel and sort of allow me to make those sort of mistakes and it doesn't set us back too much. So if you want to become a rambler, you're more than welcome. I'll drop a link in the description. It's two ninety nine a month. You get exclusive content. And if we get up to a certain number, which we're not far away from, then I'll be doing exclusive Rambler content only because I think I owe it to you for those that are supporting me in that way. So thanks again. Much appreciated. Come on, you red and white wizards. Up the blades. Ramble on. Well, now the time, the time is now. Must be blinking joking.